Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for Kremte News First at Four. I'm Mark Handrahan. Whitney is off tonight. Happening right now, the Inland Northwest RV Show returns to the Spokane County Fairgrounds. RV sales were one of the few booming industries during the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, and the trend has continued in Spokane over the last year. This year's show includes more than 175,000 square feet filled with RVs across every building on the fairgrounds. The big event underway at this hour, and that's where we find Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Goo. Jeremy, what's going on? Oh, Mark, I, I haven't looked inside just yet, but so far I've learned a lot at the Inland Northwest RV Show. One of the things I've learned, did you know that RV stands for recreational vehicle? The more you know. But hear me out on this one. Mark mentioned 175,000 square feet of RVs. We've got RVs outside. We've got RVs inside. We've got vans. We've got tow behinds. We've got fifth wheels. We've got a $450,000 RV. Who knew those things could get that expensive? Well, now that we know, we got to figure out what that thing looks like. So we're going to be heading inside here shortly. We're going to take a look at everything from the RVs to the tow behinds to the vans because if I'm honest, I should just sell my house and live in a van. Kind of fits the bill. But we're out here. We've got the storm tracker. Come say hi. Come check out the RVs. Tickets are just $12. If you're a kid, if you're 12 and under, it's free. So head on down. We'll be down here all night long. Come say hi and come check out some of these RVs. The Inland Northwest RV Show, biggest RV show, and there's multiple vendors. If you're looking for a deal on RVs, this might be the place. I'm going to try not to leave with a new one, but Mark, we're going camping this summer, man. There you go. In an RV down by the river, my friend. Jeremy, thank you very much. We'll check back in with you for the forecast in just a few minutes. Well, Redemption Church in Spokane on Division is looking to move from the neighborhood because of a rise in crime. The historic building is currently listed on, real, on the real estate website rather for $2 million. Krem 2's Janelle Finch joining us live now to tell us why the church is looking to relocate. Janelle? Mark, another business on 2nd and Division is closing its doors. Redemption Church Spokane is looking to sell. The one of the pastors here tells me the church feels burnt out and helpless, trying to combat crime in the area. After nearly a decade at 2nd and Division, Redemption Church Spokane is moving out. Jonathan Benetti has been a pastor at the church for six years. He says since 2016, he has watched the area change and not for the better. He says crime and drug activity has increased. And now he says the church has had enough. We would love to be on this corner uh, and even in the community more, uh, but we feel kind of powerless to be able to do that uh, if we can't protect the families with young kids and other people that are coming in. He says vandalism and destruction of property has cost the church tens of thousands of dollars. He says the money spent on repairs can be better used elsewhere. Another motivation to move. Kimley Haygood says the building is not under contract yet and is available to all interested buyers. We've also reached out to Spokane police for crime numbers in this area and have yet to hear back. And while uh, Redemption Church Spokane is looking for a new home, they say that they will continue to hold service here every Sunday until they find a new space. Live in Spokane, Janelle Finch, Krem2 News. All right, Janelle, thank you very much. In other news tonight, Krem2 has learned the Hope House shelter in downtown Spokane will remain open through the end of the year. Late last year, the women's shelter announced it would be closing its doors at the end of January due to a lack of funding. It would have meant a loss of 100 shelter beds in the middle of winter. Well, now they have received enough money from the Department of Commerce and the city of Spokane to remain open until December 31st. And we did receive an update from Washdot on the size of the homeless encampment off I-90 known as Camp Hope. Tonight, numbers show new numbers. The camp continues to shrink. Washdot says there are about 138 people at the camp, down 60 people from just a month ago. They're also reporting 93 tents still up compared to 120 last month. The number of RVs at the camp also down from 27 to 20 this week, with six of them towed from that site just yesterday. As of January 9th, Washdot says 51 people have moved from Camp Hope to the new Catalyst Transitional Housing Facility. This is a significant drop in people staying at the camp from the fall count of 467. Well, tonight we are learning more about the man suspected of breaking into a Deer Park home and killing an 83-year-old man last month. We dug deeper into Gary Alt's criminal history to find out how he was allowed back on the street since he has 14 prior felony convictions. 
Spokane police arrested Alt last month for a series of random assaults at a North Spokane hotel. Investigators later connected him to the December 26 murder of Richard Purdy through DNA testing. The Department of Corrections says the suspect was released to community supervision in August of last year. Join us tonight at Creme 2 News at 6 to find out how the victim's family is seeking to keep felons behind bars. And Creme 2 is just learning this afternoon the Latah County judge is expanding a non-dissemination order in the case against the Moscow murder suspect Brian Koberger and now includes attorneys for the victim's families, including the attorneys for the families of Kaylee Gonzalez, who has previously given statements to the media. That order also limits investigators, law enforcement and case attorneys from talking about information in the case that is not in the public record in order to protect the defendant's right to a fair trial. A water boil order still in effect today for parts of the city of Lewiston after a reservoir failed early yesterday morning. Three million gallons of water flooded city streets, washing away parts of city streets and sidewalks. Lewiston mayor, Lewiston's mayor rather, has now issued a disaster declaration that's now on its way to the governor's office for approval. The city's still investigating what caused the reservoir to failure. However, the water has been tested and has no contaminants, but the boil advisory is still in place as a precaution. At this hour, residents are still under that order. Again, if you live in Lewiston, you should not drink or bathe with the water out of your faucet. The city set up a free water refilling station for residents. That station is at the Lewiston Community Center. It is open right now until 8 p.m. today, and you will need to bring your own water containers to fill up. Coeur d'Alene's fire department has a new home for its fireboat years in the making. Creme 2's Nathan Hyun had the chance to check out the fireboat house today. He is there right now to tell us more. Nathan? Yeah, Mark, I'm here outside of the new fireboat house on Thurston Marina. Let's take a look. This sits about 100 feet off the shoreline and the fireboat just moved in yesterday. The Coeur d'Alene Fire Department has had their fireboat since 2015 and up until now, the fireboat lived on Blackwell Island. But since most of their callouts were in and around the lake, the fire department wanted a more permanent and closer location for the fireboat. The city council approved the project in 2020, but because of supply chain issues, the project wasn't completed until now. The new location is expected to cut down on response times. We knew there was going to be delays, but this is a, a location that will allow us to be a lot closer to where our prime usage has been, right here around Tubbs Hill. Uh, and additionally, we do a lot of we do a lot of events during the summer. The boathouse cost five hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, and most of that funding came from impact fees, and the rest from the city's urban renewal agency. The fire department says the fireboat gets caught out on emergency calls about 20 times a year. And I'm told that the fire department hopes to have a small celebration for the opening of the boathouse later this summer. But for right now, if there was an emergency, the fireboat would be ready to go today. Live in Coeur d'Alene, Nathan Hun, Creme 2 News. All right, Nathan, thank you very much. Let's take a quick break from a headline to talk weather right now. Heading back out to the Spokane County Fairgrounds where Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Goo is checking out all things weather and RVs. Jeremy? Mark, get this. I've got a new toy. And every time you get a new toy, you got to play with it. That's just how it works. So right now at the Storm Tracker, or we could say literally at the Spokane County Fairgrounds, wind out of the south southeast and it's blowing at about two to four miles per hour. And when it comes to temperatures, it's 37.8 degrees. And inside the storm tracker right now, it's 51.4 degrees. And it looks like that barometric pressure slowly starting to rise. And that is as we continue to dry out. But speaking of drying out, you wanna dry out? You wanna warm up? How about the RVs? We've got tons of RVs out here. They haven't let me inside any of these yet, but they tell me I can go inside any of them and explore, see them, touch stuff. It's all here. And it, you can just go right in. Spokane County Fairgrounds. We're at the Inland Northwest RV Show all night long, but let's go ahead and talk what's going on with the forecast because right now, officially, we sit at 33 degrees here in Spokane. And yes, we are drying out. Yes, we are getting rid of some of that cloud cover. And as everything progresses a little bit farther to the east, we are going to wind up seeing things continue to clear out. That's a bit of good news. Now, when it comes to potential snow or rain, 
We're dry the next couple of days, not until Saturday and not until later in the day on Saturday do we get our next round of precipitation. It likely starts as a little bit of wintry mix and then quickly changes over to snow, but this one's looking a lot more, well, dismal than even the last one, which left us with little to talk about. As that works its way out, we are going to watch temperatures trend just slightly cooler, and it definitely feels slightly cooler right now, but believe it or not, Highs in the mid-30s, lows in the mid-20s, that's about as seasonally average as it gets for this time of year. Next few days, well, it's that. 35 tomorrow, we might see a little more sun in the afternoon. Saturday, that's when we get our next round of light snow. And then Sunday, back to that mix of clouds and sun.